Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'll tell you, that scared me for a minute. I thought they died in the, on the site here. Okay, so uh, we are so happy uh, on this beautiful night. Uh, we're calling this the California Christmas this year. And so we're so happy to gather for Christmas Eve worship. And um, I'd like to uh, greet you in the name of of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our living and risen Savior. Uh, tonight, um, as we uh, go to this time of lighting the Advent candle, uh, this is the night of the year that we get a chance to light the center candle, which represents uh, Jesus Christ. And so uh, I'm going to invite you on the screen. There's going to be uh, a part for you. And uh, we'll go ahead and proceed with that. Here we go. We gather in the night to proclaim the light. We shrug off despair and embrace hope. We set aside conflict and choose peace. We push away despair by claiming joy. We overcome hate by rising into love. And because this night, we know, even in the shadows of our doubts, we know that we are loved. That is what it means to be home. We light these candles, hoping to become the light, hoping to radiate light by how we live. We light these candles, to create a space called home in this place, in our place, in our inner places. We light these candles to declare that unto us a Savior is born, who is Christ the Lord. Welcome by angels singing and shepherds kneeling. Welcome home by those like us who have worshipped for thousands of years. Welcome home again tonight, right here, right now, in us. It's time to be home. As you're able, please rise. Let's join our voices together in praise to God.
Amen. I almost had the last part of that song memorized, Bruce. I, I know you're proud of me. All right. Uh, as we go and join our hearts now in a time of uh, prayer, we know that there are several that are uh, dealing with some sickness, and we want to uh, have you uh, lift them up and intercede on their behalf. Uh, one was given to us uh, by a prayer card, a friend of Nancy Bones. Her name's Eileen, and she's dealing with terminal kidney cancer. And so if you can remember Eileen in your prayers. Also, uh, we are wanting to be in prayer for our friend Ted Fournier, Jr. Uh, he is having some recurrences, some heart issues that have plagued him, and, and so we want to uh, lift up Ted and remember Ted in our, in our prayer time. Also, uh, we just uh, know that this is a time of year that is very difficult to lose a loved one, and uh, the family of Chip Matthews is needing your prayer, uh, and that is Alan Fassold's former boss and friend. And so uh, keep that family in your prayers, and all families that are, are dealing with a loss of a loved one during this time of year. Let's, uh, let's go to God in this time of prayer, and, and let's just uh, put our hearts into uh, this communion with God as we connect in, in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much. We know that tonight that you are a God that is so close to us that you even know sometimes through the groaning of, of your spirit within us how to pray when we can't even form the prayer. Lord, you know uh, the prayer that we need many times, weeks before we even know it. So, Lord, we thank you for being a God that knows us that well. We thank you for being a God that's with us tonight. As we celebrate uh, Christmas Eve, we are so aware uh, tonight of your blessing of love through Jesus Christ that we uh, center our time of, of celebration around. Lord, we know that that's a part of your plan to share your love with the world, to share Jesus. And so, Lord, today uh, we recognize uh, Jesus as our healer, as our great physician, and we lift up these that uh, are in a time of, of needing some uh, prayer for their physical health. And so I pray, Father, that you'll be with Eileen. I pray that you'll be with Ted. Lord, I also pray uh, tonight that you'll be with all of those uh, that are going through uh, times of sickness, maybe some, some that you know that are in your family, and Lord, we lift their name up before you right now. Also, Lord, those that have lost the loved ones during this time of Christmas, we pray, Father, that you'll just uh, surround them and and give them the hug of the Holy Spirit, Lord, and help them to know how close you really are. Lord, be with them as they go through this time of grief. And we ask, Father, that you will continue to watch out over all of those that have lost loved ones during this season, as well as before, as we remember many in our hearts and in our minds uh, that aren't with us this Christmas. But Lord, we know the celebration is always that they're with you as they've known you as their Lord and Savior. So Lord, help us uh, as we go throughout this night to keep that in our hearts and keep that in our minds. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey. 
angels, angels in the night. Angels, angels from on high. Messengers of grace, messengers of light. Angels, angels fill the sky. Angels from the highest high, glory all around, heaven reaching out, the song we never heard, how beautiful the sound, singing glory Try that one. Please rise and follow along on this one too. Just sing if you know it. Uh, sing, sing if you don't know it. Um, sway. Raise your arms. Raise your hands to, to God tonight. And thanks for the gift that we have been given at this time of year. Our blessed Lord and Savior. Oh, 
precious promise, Son of God and Son of Man. Heaven's glory in a manger has come to us in Bethlehem. Thank you. Please be seated. certainly a privilege to be with you this Christmas Eve, and I uh, don't know about you, but I get kind of excited this time of year. Uh, it's not because of White Christmas this year, though. Uh, I, I'm thinking that we will have to look at that in, in the Alaska area or something, but um, one of the things I get excited about is seeing families come together. There's some beautiful families here tonight. I just want to say 
Uh, I hope each family here has a wonderful, wonderful celebration of Christmas. And, you know, sometimes one of the things that we, we tend to focus on for weeks sometimes is uh, gathering all sorts of uh, packages and things like that to be able to, um, to celebrate. John, uh, make sure that that remote button is, is uh, where I can use that. Go ahead and, and uh, click on it again, please. There you go. All right. Uh, some of you, your living rooms may look a little like this. How many of you w w would say that getting a present at Christmas is really kind of cool? And, and how many can say that giving a, prisma, uh, giving a present at Christmas is even cooler yet? <laughs> and watching someone unwrap those packages and and uh, just the scene that that happens around family uh, living rooms all over the world uh, is it's something about giving it's something about how uh, receiving a gift uh, it's something that reminds us about the central core of what Christianity is all about because I believe that the greatest gift that we ever have received at Christmas time came from God. And I believe that undisputed heavyweight champion, of, oh no, that's a different one. The undisputed best ever gift of all time is one that God gave us, and that is Jesus, God's gift to all of us. And so just like a present that someone would hand you, uh, you all have a choice to receive that gift. You all have a choice to unwrap the gift that you've been given in these celebrations every time that happens. I hope it becomes a reminder for you after tonight of God's gift that all we have to do is to accept it and to open up our hearts to Jesus Christ. And I believe that our lives can be changed forever. Advent is, is a, we've been focusing over these last four weeks, and if you want to go back, there's several sermons you can look at online. We've been doing a sermon series called Rediscover Christmas because in the midst of some of the struggles that we've had over these last couple of years with various uh, uh, health crises around the world, it's time for us to rediscover it's time for us to rediscover what Advent season really means, and that is the four characters of God that we can count on in each one of our lives every single day, all the, all the time. The gift that God gives us is the gift of hope, and we talked about that. It's the gift of peace. Uh, it's the gift of joy that bubbles up. Remember we talked about the mud pots and how it just bubbles up and, and, and in Yellowstone it reminds us of, of how joy in our, in our heart and our life can just bubble up and come out when we realize how blessed we really are. And also during the Christmas season we, we focus on love because the love of Christ uh, and the love of God, uh, you remember John three sixteen for God so did what? loved the world that he gave his only begotten son Jesus Christ that whosoever believes in him should never perish but have eternal life and that's a gift from God above so I'd like for us to just uh, quickly visit these so we can remind ourselves that you know there are times when you and I may have days where we don't feel very hopeful uh, there are times when uh, you, you ask yourself, well, you know, how hopeful am I right now after all I've been through, uh, through this past year, through this past two years, and beyond? But I want to remind you that Jesus is the one that came to this earth to help us restore our hope. Jesus is the one uh, that was sent by God to help reconcile us to a loving God that created all of us. And so during this season, we're reminded of the true reason for the hope that's within us, and that's our faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus offers us uh, the hope of restoration 
and the hope of healing. Uh, it, Jesus offers us a chance to become whole again. And there are times in our lives we kind of feel broken, don't we? We kind of feel uh, hopeless at times when things don't go the way that we wish that they would go. But when we rediscover Christmas, we rediscover Jesus, and we rediscover how uh, Jesus can restore our lives and provide healing for us, and all of us from time to time need healing in our life. Is there an amen out there? Does anybody need healing sometimes? All right? Amen. Um, Jesus is the one that renews the hope that's within us. And, and what this does is it, it happens when Jesus is with us. And, and one of the things that God's love did for us when Jesus ascended from this earth was to give us the presence of Christ through the Holy Spirit within our hearts and lives. God is that close to be within us to be a part of us, to be a part of our guiding light, so to speak, as we talk about the light of Christ uh, tonight. And the scripture teaches this so beautifully when it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, God's presence within us gives us power to overcome things that are troubling in our lives. When we, when we rediscover Christmas, we rediscover our relationship with Christ and feel the strength of the Holy Spirit guiding us, loving us, consoling us when we go through tough times. God will never leave us, nor will God ever forsake us. And so we know that we can place our hope in the living God. Uh, peace, we talked about, uh, and it's something that uh, is different than just a, an ordinary kind of peace. This is a peace that transcends our circumstances. This is a peace that God uh, offers us because knowing Christ in our life is like having our own personal storm shelter. How many of you have ever been caught in a storm while you were camping by anybody out there? I, w I was in charge of, I was, a, I, I was a scout growing up, and I was in charge of putting up the tent at Niagara Falls. That's the only time I've been there. We, we tent camped up there. And uh, I had to make sure to really stake it down good, and it's a good thing I did because the night uh, that we were there, a 55 mile an hour wind came up overnight and uh, at the time I was about 12 years old and they put their trust in me to make sure the tent got put up now my family had a lot of trust in me but the thing was is as the wind blew and as the storm blew over us and of course you could barely hear it over the roar of the falls but as all of that was happening and we were huddled in our shelter I realized that our, our safety was placed more than in the tent stakes that were holding the tent to the ground. Our safety was more than uh, the skill that it took for me to be able to erect that tent in a way that, uh, I, I don't know how, but the next morning, the only thing that blew down was the canopy, and that protected us even further. And so, uh, I, it's more than my skill that caused us to survive that. It is when we realize that our protector, that our provider is in Jesus Christ. And knowing that Christ is that for us, that becomes the storm shelter for our life. A couple of weeks ago, we uh, unfortunately, in, in six different states or seven uh, experienced a very damaging tornado. Over 80 people lost their lives in Kentucky uh, and here in Illinois uh, and in Defiance, Missouri. And there was several folks that uh, the, the storm caught them by surprise. And, and to be honest, tonight, this is something that we're doing as a church is, is we are uh, 
gathering funds uh, to be able to help tornado victims. And so if, as you're, you're leaving this evening, if you would like to support that effort, just write a check to St. Luke's United Methodist Church and make sure to put tornado relief on your check and, and put it in the black box in our welcome center. But the thing is, is that uh, storm shelters uh, aren't always easy to find. But I can tell you a storm shelter that is always easy to find, and that is to shelter your life under the wings of Jesus Christ. Shelter the, from the, the storms of life can always be found through our Lord. And so this is something I want us to think about. When we want peace in our life, we need the protection, we need the provision of Jesus Christ as our storm shelter. Peace also happens when we rediscover how to connect with God, and our prayer life is so important because even through our struggles, uh, our connection with God through prayer can bring peace, and it can return us back to wholeness uh, as we connect with the living God. God knows us, knows our needs, but that connection between us gets stronger and stronger as we remember, yes, God hears our prayers. God's peace is also something that just goes beyond any kind of human understanding. That's a scripture and how it teaches about prayer. God's peace goes beyond what we can think because God already has us in the palm of the hand of God and we can rest in peace knowing that God is there for us. I think that also uh, the scripture teaches us uh, some beautiful things about God's peace when it said, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The book of Philippians is a wonderful way to remind us God's all over uh, being our provider and to be there for us, to give us peace, even when peace is hard to find in this world. Is there joy in our life? I mean, I, you've heard this uh, joy, and, you know, make sure you have joy in your journey. Uh, life is short, all right, and we need to have joy. And joy is something that we, we visited about that helps us to be able to understand that if you want joy, you want Jesus Christ uh, to be a part of your heart and your life. I mean, if you want joy, you need Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, and I know many of you have, have said, I want Jesus as my Lord. And, and that is such an important way for us to maintain joy because we know uh, Jesus as the source of our joy. We know that when we rediscover Christmas this year, it calls us to rejoice in the Lord our Savior, the, the Messiah, as our band sang about so beautifully earlier. Uh, it, it is a part of our joy uh, this Christmas uh, to be able to put Christ in Christmas. Uh, our goal is, some, is something to try to get back to that position of joy. Have you ever heard about a mountaintop experience? I've had a few of those, okay? Uh, that's where uh, you are so joyful that, that your heart is about to burst. Uh, one of them was... Uh, when my daughter was born, and they handed me this little bitty package of, of bubbling joy. And I'm telling you what, I was scared to death. But I was also weeping with joy. I was just overwhelmed with joy. Because if you know our story, that little girl was over seven years of infertility uh, that we suffered. But God had a plan. And God used it for God's glory. And our double blessing is my son. And uh, that was a real joy, too, when I was able to hold him in my arms and uh, help the doctor do his measurements. Well, that, that was a first. So uh, think thing about it is there's times in our lives that are mountaintop experiences. But one of the most uh, critical mountaintop experiences we all can have is knowing that Jesus is there and is our Lord and our Savior, and we can have that experience every day of our whole lives. 
The scripture teaches us in 1 Peter, it says, Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Peter was the rock that the church was built on, and Peter knew that Jesus Christ was Lord of his life and the Messiah and his Savior. And tonight, you are invited also to know what Peter knew. That was indescribable joy. Peter knew that as he proclaimed Christ as his living Lord. So uh, tonight I want us to think about, we talked a little bit about this Sunday, this past Sunday, can you love like Jesus Christ? I mean, that's a challenge, isn't it? Uh, can you love like Christ? And, and we talked about how Christ uh, crossed all sorts of borders and boundaries in his ministry time on this earth. Christ even loved uh, Jews and Gentiles, uh, different, different people of different cultures. Christ crossed those cultures. Christ uh, loved folks that were clean and unclean. We remember how Christ even uh, healed the leper. Wow. Uh, we, we see how the love of Christ knows no boundaries, young and old. Uh, there are so many different ways that the scripture describes this. Uh, Jesus is one who desperately loves you, each and one of you individually that are here tonight. So uh, loving like Christ means that we need to experience that Christ-like love in our life, and that love is perfect. And so perfect love casts out fear. There's a lot of fear going on in the world today, and the only way that that fear can be reduced is through the love of Christ coming out through us. We need to model that love, and that's going to help that fear to be allayed. God's grace and forgiveness is complete. It's, it's sufficient for you. It's sufficient for me. It's sufficient for every single living and breathing soul on this planet. God's love through Jesus Christ is the real deal. We need to open that present. We need to open that package and, and recognize that through our faith, that's how we come to know Jesus Christ, not just by our works alone, but through our faith. Jesus, uh, in the scripture, it's talking about the love of Christ when it says, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. And I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. God gave us Jesus Christ so that we could be reconciled in our relationship with God because through Jesus our sins can be forgiven as our once and for all sacrifice given by God's love for each of us. Wow. It is part of having the fullness of God when our sins can be a part of our forever past and not our forever future. Sins, go and sin no more is what Jesus uh, talked about. And it, it gives us a chance to have a fresh start. And so that's part of the love of Christ. The greatest discovery that we can find this Christmas isn't a package under the tree, isn't something stuffed in a chimney like I used to do with my kids' presents uh, to hide them. Uh, it isn't something that's... Uh, that's stuck in the attic, which I did that too, I have to admit. Uh, it isn't something that is, an, is at a neighbor's house because I was afraid the kids would find their, their bicycles uh, otherwise. Uh, it's not that kind of a present. The finding Jesus is the real deal. It's a present that keeps on day by day uh, helping us to discover why God loved this world. Because he gave us Jesus, we know God as a God of love. 
because Jesus offers us forgiveness and unconditional love. You know what unconditional means? Sometimes when we don't even deserve it. I mean, that's the grace of God over our life, isn't it? I mean, there are times when we, we can say Jesus is the one that loves us even if we're rotten to the core. Now, I have not been described that way, as some of you may be dreaming about right now. But at the same time, uh, it, it does prove the point that Jesus sees deeper uh, into our hearts, into our souls, in, down to our very soul prints that we are created by the living God. We are worth and worthy of being a part of this wonderful gift that God is giving us through Jesus Christ. We just have to open that present, and that present is Jesus Christ and the love of Christ in our life. A believers experience Emmanuel, which means God with us every day of their lives. And it's through the Holy Spirit indwelling the life of the believer where we understand God's love even deeper. And we understand God's word even stronger. So I'm going to leave you tonight because uh, uh, I, want you, I want you to really think about this because it's so important. If you want hope, if you want joy and peace and love folks you really want jesus and i want to invite you uh, right now into a time of prayer as we pray together because finding jesus is our greatest discovery this christmas and we believe jesus christ is the one that makes the eternal difference in our life let's go to god in prayer God, on this Christmas Eve, uh, we recognize you as a present. We recognize you as the one who, who dwells within us through your Holy Spirit as we say, yes, we want Jesus as Lord of our life. And so, Lord, tonight I invite those that are, are with us online, if they have never accepted Jesus as Lord of their life, or those that are in our house tonight, uh, your house, we pray, Father, that you will bless and, and uh, guide them as they would start new life in Christ on Christmas Eve 2021. Lord, it's an important thing that happens when we uh, understand the love that you, you shared with us by sharing Jesus with the world. And so, Lord, tonight, may this Christmas Eve be one where Christ is the center of our Christmas, where we understand where our hope comes from, where we can experience God's peace, even through the really difficult times we may face. Lord, the, the source of our joy and how love is a part of your plan for the world, Lord, by giving us uh, an opportunity to be able to be freed from the burdens of sin. So, Lord, thank you now for this time. And we pray that as, as this week goes on, a uh, weekend, I pray that you would be the center of our Christmas celebration. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, this is uh, one of those times that I really enjoy. Um, Christmas is a great time for candlelight. And uh, many of you receive candles. As any, if anyone needs a candle, we'll run and grab you one. Um, but if you have your battery-operated opera, battery candle, go ahead and turn that on right now. And then if you, as uh, the band is starting to play, I'm going to come and we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, pass the light from the Christ candle. Uh, and this light will light your candles as Jesus Christ is and, and will be the light of the world that's through you, through your witness. So let's, uh, let's celebrate some candlelight, and we can bring most of the house lights down, Tom. All right. If you would tip your candle like that, thank you, good job. And then keep your candles upright while we're singing. That would be great. There you go.
that's before you remember that you now become the light of Christ for the world as you leave this place tonight and so may we remember as we have this candlelight ceremony and service that we are part of God's greater plan and I pray that you will help us to be ready for this year ahead now, if you will, please uh, put your hand just behind the light, and let's go ahead and extinguish those with a, a gentle, <laughs> gentle breeze there. Let's uh, go to God in prayer, and we'll start bringing the house lights up. Lord Jesus Christ, uh, tonight uh, you have proven to be our light. You've proven to be our, our hope. You've proven to be our peace. Lord, you've proven that uh, through your love, transformation can be made in this world. And so, Lord, we are such a thankful people. May we all go out into this world and be in celebration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everybody, please uh, witness to each other and wish each other a, 
uh, Merry Christmas, and uh, let's listen to the band one more time. Thank you. 